Hi everyone, Love Coach Macy here, founder of the I Am Super Love System, helping single women who want to fall in love dissolve those fears and blocks that hold them back so that they can attract phenomenal love with total ease. And here I want to share with you a situation that I see that comes up a lot. And that's when you're getting yourself out there, you're dating and you maybe met someone really great that you're getting to know and it's clear that you're interested in each other. Maybe you're texting back and forth and just in those early stages and you're enjoying it until you're not. And then there's that point where maybe you recognize, well, this isn't gonna work for me. This isn't the right one for me, but that other person is still interested in you. So honestly, what do you do with that? So you have two choices, <laughs> you either, tell them that it's not working out or you ghost them and i know i can already hear it all of you out there saying you know what i would never do that macy i would never just ghost someone that's awful it feels terrible when someone ghosts me well here's what can happen when you think about telling someone that you're not interested first of all like what are the words what do you say like how do you say that what do you say to someone who's a really good person and maybe 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 you're even doubting yourself thinking well this is a good person maybe it is the right person maybe i should stay with them and then maybe you're thinking about well no you know it's not the right person and then you think okay well if i tell them that they're not the right person for me then what's going to happen what if they react in their angry or super sad or frustrated or lash out or say i didn't like you anyway whatever the thing is that may be coming up in that scenario that may also bring up your own fear of rejection like that feeling of oh i can't reject someone else it feels so bad to be rejected then you're thinking ah i don't want to be the rejector do you know what i'm saying like this cycle and then you think about the rejection, you think about all of the times that you've been rejected and how painful that was. Maybe it made you feel like you life stopped for a while. And I know this seems dramatic and not all of these cases are like that, but this is a scenario that I see a lot of times. And when we're <clears throat> freaking about, okay, I don't know what to say. I don't know how they're going to react. I don't know, you know, I don't want to be the rejector. Then it's easy for this interesting sort of thing to start seeping in, which is this, this desire to avoid that altogether. And maybe in this avoiding of all of that, next thing you know, you recognize that that person's texting you, that person's calling you and you're sort of conveniently busy because you are busy and things come up in life and it just feels justified that, well, you know, I, there's things happening. I just, I can't answer. It's not my fault. And then it just sort of becomes this interesting sort of sneaky ghosting that isn't necessarily a conscious choice but it's starting to happen and underneath all that can be a subtle sense of guilt or shame that just is hovering in your space you know what i'm saying i mean i know because i've had this experience before and i've seen it in other people and when there's that kind of static of like, oh, I don't know what to do, so I'm just not gonna deal with it. And yet this person's in the space. I mean, maybe they stop calling and whatever, but there may be some guilt left over, or maybe they slow down and maybe reach out later and you're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna leave it. That leaves kind of an icky vibe in our field. So in the effort of not wanting to hurt someone's feelings, we kind of end up in this place where we're hurting someone's feelings. And so what do you do? So here's my take on this. So with option one, if you choose to tell them, 
then remember that anyone else's reaction is not in your control. So can you be with that presence of you that says, you know what, this isn't going to work and come from that space of kindness within you to then share with the other person, letting go of any need for them to respond in a certain way because you can't control it, knowing that the kindest thing that you can do for you, therefore, and anyone else is to be honest. And it can be as simple as, I really loved meeting you and I'm just not feeling it. That's how simple it can be. So in the other circumstance, when we've actually ghosted someone, whether it's conscious or not, what ghosting ends up being is this kind of thing where we've been in a sense ghosting ourselves because we already know that we're not a match for that person, yet we're just not listening. We're not saying, okay, well, you know, what can I do about this? Because when you're not listening and you still have that in you and you just sort of avoid it, then there's like this weird energy around avoidance. So here's when I want to remind you that how you be with yourself, how your presence presenced with yourself is a, a model to the universe as to the type of relationship you are wanting to receive. So I'm going to say that again, how your presence with yourself, how you're listening to yourself, how you're acknowledging yourself becomes a model to the universe as to the kind of relationship you want to receive. So when you're saying, oh yeah, I realize this isn't going to work and you actually, you know, go to the person and say, hey, this is what's happening for me. It feels awkward or whatever, but I just want to let you know that I don't think this is a match and I really want you to have the best match for you. And I'm sure you want that for me too, or whatever you say. I mean, this isn't about the script, but this is about speaking from that heart space and knowing that that is where you're going to have the most, um, this most space to receive the greatest possible relationship. Because over time, as you collect kind of the static of unfinished business and, oh man, I, maybe I hurt someone's feelings, I don't know, like all the stories that could hang out from the avoidance, then um, it takes up space. So I invite you to ask, okay, what can I choose or be today that is the energy of the relationship that I would love to receive? And asking that question opens up the space for you to then respond from the most powerful place, the most conscious place, the kindest place for you. So what can I choose? or be today? What energy can I be today? What choice can I make today that is the energy of the kind of relationship that I am asking to receive? And then notice what awareness you have and do that. So I hope this was helpful. I am here to support all of you in having the most amazing relationship, the kind of relationship that is that super loved relationship, the kind of relationship I've also called unicorn love because it's the kind of love you never thought could exist, but it does. And it starts with how you be with you. So if you found this helpful, please share this video, comment below, because I love hearing your comments. Let me know if this was helpful. If there's any other topics that you would like to have me address, comment on that too. And please share this with your single friends because, you know, the more that we can be conscious about how we create our love relationships, the more love we have in the world. And what does the world need more than ever? Love. So thanks for being here. I'm so happy to share this with you. See you really soon. Bye.